Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are filming with a very, very special car as you can see. This is my friend Alex's Lotus Exige S. It is a 2016 car. It is a lovely shade of grey as you can see. Uh, it also sports an automatic gearbox instead of a manual and a few other interesting bits that you'll see as we go around that makes this a very unique spec. Uh, not on the front of it but once we look into it a little bit more, you'll see what I mean. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the video and let's get into it. Now, before we start talking more about the Lotus in hand, uh, I did want to mention quickly, we are at the beautiful Northfield airfield. So we are here at a, the day of a car and bike meet. So as you can hear and see probably, quite a lot of traffic uh, and also the noise of planes and the fact that an open airfield is quite windy. So I did want to apologise in advance before I start nattering on about this lovely car. But in actual fact, you might not be able to hear me much. Not that that's much of a surprise on my channel anyway, as that happens with every other video. I will get a microphone at some point. So, as with every single YouTube video starring a slightly comically low car, the first thing everyone has to do is show how hard it is to get in and out of. Um, the Lotus is no exception for that. The car has a extraordinary wide base here that makes it quite hard to get in and out of. Um, it makes it a pain on the passenger side, let alone the driver's side with the steering wheel in the way. Uh, and obviously the roof being very low as well. It's a Spitfire, bear with. It's good. Yeah, with the roof being very low as well, it does make it quite difficult. So we'll, uh, we'll attempt that now. You sort of go foot, foot first as always. Oh, sit on the seal and then sort of drop in other foot in oh, and it's as easy as that oh so here we are in the exige s and as you can see it's very uh very low it doesn't take much effort to touch your head on the ceiling um it's actually pretty bare with hat off for a little bit more headroom and also it's a very warm day so trying not to sweat too much. Uh, as I mentioned this car is particularly unique. Um, the reason why is and before everyone jumps for me this is not that classic oh this is the only Lotus made on a Friday at 6 p.m in this color. This car is technically a one of one um, as far as you can stretch that term. This is the only Lotus and I have to remember this perfectly. It's the only one in grey with an automatic gearbox with red stitching. Now, I think that's pretty broad. You'd think that there'd be more than one with red stitching gray car that doesn't like a manual, but here I am sat in the only one. Um, it's an interesting thing to think about really, that maybe it's because Lotus is a bit of a niche brand and it attracts, I hope Alex won't mind me saying, the weirder customer, that such a common spec as grey with red stitching wouldn't be more common. But here we are, as I say, sat in the only one. The interior is, uh, other than quite small, actually particularly comfortable. I've done a fair few hundred miles in this car in the passenger seat. I've never driven it. Uh, Alex is very precious about who he lets drive his car, which is totally understandable considering what a lovely thing it is. Um, yeah, it's comfy. You'd be surprised because, I'm sh as I'm sure you saw in some of the other footage I got, it's a little bit tight in here. It's you know knee to knee. You're very you're very much up against the driver, or the driver's up against the passenger, I should say. Um, it can be a bit of a struggle to get comfy in cars like this, but this one does it so effortlessly. And of course, with the sound of the V6 supercharged engine screaming in your back ear, it is literally behind a very thin piece of glass just there. And every time the driver puts his foot down, you can look back there and you will see the engine tweaking away, moving everywhere. It's, it's a really great noise and view. Um, 
yeah, there's not much more to talk about in terms of interior, to be honest. It's, as I say, an automatic with the paddles. Uh, I believe it to be a six speed, uh, it could be a five. Um, rev gauge goes up to around 9,000 RPM. Uh, its top speed is about 165, 170 miles an hour. Um, I'm really sorry, I'm trying not to look. A Spitfire has just landed in the background. I'll show you that very quickly. There's Alex there filming it. I believe you can see just there, there's a Spitfire. Pretty cool. Um, put that back on there. My bad, sorry, I'll cut that. <laughs> So we're back. Um, yeah, so 170-ish miles an hour top speed. Uh, it's about 350 bhp, I think. I might double check that. The car's turned off. Alex, it's about 350 bhp, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I can confirm from the Lotus Encyclopedia that is the owner. Uh, this is 350 horsepower, but this is not the 350 model that also had the exact same engine, exact same amount of horsepower, but just different body panels, apparently, uh, which is classic Lotus, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so what else are we at? We're at, you know, nice black leather, as I say, red stitching. The car is treated with these lovely brushed aluminium looking pieces on the steering wheel. The very small excuse for a glove compartment, probably just water bottle holder. Uh, a few areas down in the footwell, including the pedals and the handbrake. Uh, there is also the brushed aluminium on the sides and you can have it on the floor, but this one is carpeted. I should also mention due to the interior, this is technically in, an interior thing, I think, is this is a convertible. Um, there's a few little Torx bits here. One, two, three, uh, unscrew those, the roof pops off. Uh, it's pretty cool. I've never actually experienced it with the roof off and unfortunately Alex doesn't have the tool to do it with him today. Um, but it'd be cool to see in the future, obviously. Fun fact uh, as well, when you take the roof off, it reveals a sticker saying, don't take the roof off, you will die. So that's a fun one. Um, yeah, Lotus is just a brand that's full of quirks, isn't it? It's really fun. Um, I think that's about it in terms of interior. Storage space, there's a little netted thing back here as i said no glove box just like a water bottle holder type thing there's a few little cubby holes and stuff no door pockets obviously um other than that not much to go into really it's pretty simple and that's kind of why i love this car because it's simple raw angry it's great great fun very loud as well <laughs> the back end, the Bunda, as they say in the uh, streets, of the Lotus Exige S. Um, it is a Toyota, believe it or not, uh, three and a half litre V6 with a supercharger, as I said. Um, it is 350 horsepower, as I said. Um, funny enough, it's also a uh, Toyota gearbox as well, both from the Camry, we believe. Um, it's an awesome engine once Lotus are finished fettling with it as they do. The noise that this thing makes is incredible. Um, I'm sure we'll get some noise clips at one point, probably not here, because we'll get told off. I know it's an airport, it's loud, but they don't like things revving around here for some reason. Um, it's quite a large boot space, 210 liters, in fact, of boot space. Uh, everything gets very hot, unfortunately, so no, no long milk runs in this at all, as you'll end up with an awful Costa hot milkshake. That's the thing. Um, yeah, there's not much to go on about in here really, other than the fact of the surprisingly large storage space, the great sounding engine, and yeah, that's about it under here. There's not much to talk about other than, as I said, glorious, glorious noise machine. Although being a stock setup, I like to do the uh, whole wheel check on cars, obviously. We have the uh, totally stock Lotus Exige S wheels in black. Uh, also a little Lotus tire cap, which I, uh, I'm a big fan of. Uh, we have the Michelin Pilot 4s, not 4Ss. Um, it is also on Lotus Motorsport Nitron Suspension, which is a very fun short name in 
maintenance terms, it just basically means the car has adjustable ride height and adjustable dampers to make the car either harder or softer to be in, uh, which obviously does absolutely nothing when you're in a low 6 e because it's very rough no matter what. Uh, other than that, there's not much to go on really. Nice Lotus brake calipers, nice big red and silver logos there. Um, you know, the classic, iconic yellow and green setting caps. It's pretty, pretty bog standard. As I said, it's a completely stock car, so no modifications can be seen as it should be, in my opinion, with a car like this. I think it looks great as it is, sounds great as it is, and it drives great. So I don't think there's much needed to be done in terms of modifications. Uh, it's pretty great. So before I end off the video, I wanted to uh, invite Alex on camera because obviously I will stand here for ages talking about the car's stats and facts and my opinions on it. But I think it's really important to hear from the owners and the reason why they bought a car like this because that's what cars are all about, that sort of personal connection. So I'm gonna ask Alex to come on the camera in a sec and talk about why he picked this amazing car and what made him choose this one. So here we are with Alex. Alex, say hi to the people. Hiya. Cool. Um, so essentially, I wanna know, Alex, why did you pick a Lotus Exige? Why did you pick this one? What, what led to this? I've always grown up a fan of Lotus. Um, one of my neighbors had a friend who had a blue Lotus Elise, an, an S2. Um, and I always told me and my brothers, we always wanted to get a Lotus Elise. When the time came, these Exiges were kind of in a, in a good place on the market. And I'd say they still kind of are. Um, and sort of, I'm massively into motorsport. I believe this is the closest you can get to a motorsport vehicle on the road. Definitely from stock anyways um, and it, it definitely gives that feel when you're in it it feels like a sports prototype or something like that and that's why i love it um, it might rattle your bones and it might be a pain to get in and out of but it's the character and the history behind lotus which keeps me uh, from getting rid of it so that's that's, that's why I, it, really. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good reason and i think a lot of people can relate to wanting that track yeah, feeling like yeah. if you if you compare this to the last video i did if you can on uh, Dow's full, fully track ripped out Fiesta. He's also getting that same feeling, but having to do so much to his vehicle. Whereas this, you can pop down to your local Lotus, pick this up, well, not anymore. Not unfortunately, anymore, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> you can pop down to your local secondhand Lotus dealership or wherever you go and pick up what is basically a track ready exotic sports car. We'll yeah, call it, we won't yeah, call it a supercar, yeah. but yeah. The roughest of fellas, it <laughs> Fuck it, supercar. Um, yeah, track ready, supercar, hypercar, even. <laughs> but yeah, thanks very much for letting me film it. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, it's probably a very short one. We'll get some uh, We'll get some sound clips of this further away from where we're not with the airport workers, where we're gonna upset them um, and make too much noise. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that if we get around to filming it. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna like the video, go for it. If not, I couldn't care less. Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. See you later. Cool.